Welcome to whiskey.com, where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. And today I present the distillery Ben Riach, together with yeah, quite a lot of different bottlings here on my cask. Ben Riach was founded in 1898, so it's quite a new distillery. Most of the well-established distilleries were founded in the mid-20s of the 19th, 19th century, and Ben Riach was closed already in 1900, so they just ceased production after two years. They were uh, reopened after two years in 1965. So <laughs> they had a production two years from 1898 to 1900, and then they were closed up to 1965. Um, in 17, no, in 8, 1978, the distillery was sold to Seagrams, and Seagrams, a Canadian company, was or developed itself to the biggest spirits distilling company in the world. And uh, they doubled production in 1985. They uh, doubled the number of stills from two to four. And they produced uh, the whiskey for the Chivas. Regal blended Scotch whiskey. And for this uh, blended whiskey, there had been a lot of distilleries working always in pairs for, yes, for the safety of a distillery uh, burned down. But <laughs> there wasn't any fire in the last 50, 60 years. The last fire was in the 60s. Uh, the roof of the distill, still house of Talisker would blow off. And there was, yes, the roof of Kirchhoman only a few years ago, but they uh, had an interruption in production only over a few weeks. So, um, which were those distilleries? Uh, Capadonic, it was named Grand Grand II, just opposite the street and in Rothes. Then Glen Grant, of course, uh, Ben Riach. Then there was the Strathaila distillery, today the home of the Chivas, Alta Bain, and I think the Braval, Braves of Glenlivet distillery. And they were arranged in pairs. Um, and Capadonic was torn down, completely gone. Uh, ben Riach was sold. Uh, and the others, I think they are still working for the Chivas brand. At Ben Riach in 1999, the floor malting, maltings were closed. And I visited Ben Riach in 1998 and they were painting uh, the columns of the, the wooden columns uh, of the malting floors and everything was tidy and well done. And, and then those <coughs> floor maltings never went in production then. I think I heard something that uh, in nowadays they plan to open uh, one of the floor maltings. I'm not quite sure if that happened already or not. Um, in 2001, uh, Ben Riach was sold to Pernod Ricard, the second biggest distilling company in the world. And I think uh, the Seagrams corporation was divided between the big two, uh, Diageo and Pernod Ricard. 2002, Ben Riach was closed again. So they were bought and closed. What the hell? Uh, and in the year 2004, the distillery was sold to a South African company called Intertrading. It's a beer uh, company. And uh, later on in 2008, they bought Glen Donach. And 2013, I think, they bought Glen Glasso. So today, this Intertrading company uh, runs three good distilleries and they uh, have the, the Billy Walker. Billy Walker works uh, for this company and uh, has an eye over the production, so everything is all right with the whiskey. In 1983, the first peaty whiskey, peated whiskey, was produced at Benria. And here we have two different ranges, at least two different ranges of Benria whiskies. One is the unpeated range, and the other is the peated range. And there are a lot of specialties, and I already tasted a few of them. Uh, have a look at the playlist of uh, Ben Riach. Uh, the entry uh, single malt is the Heart of Speyside, which is a no-age whiskey, 40% ABV, uh, quite affordable. 
The second in row was the 16 year old, which was widely available for a very reasonable price, uh, has 43%. And uh, with the years, there had been a very old 10 year old in a uh, white blue box, I think. I put a picture in here of this old 10 year old. Um, this is a collector's item today. This was in the time before the distillery was closed in 1999. Uh, no, before 2002. Um, yeah, the 16 year old, which sold very well, and then they added a 12 year old and a 12 year old uh, sherry cask, sherry maturation, uh, with 46% ABV. The others only have 43. Uh, and uh, this is also, I think, unchill filtered and uncolored and beautiful. A very intense sherry aroma. And they added a 20 year old. I haven't tasted that one, I think. Time to taste. On the other hand, uh, we have the uh, peated, the smoky whiskey, and the most prominent is the Curiositas. They gave these whiskies uh, Latin words or Latin, Latin sounding words like these Curiositas, Septendecim, Authenticus, and so on. And uh, Fumosus, some are called. Um, and the 10 year Curiositas is a heavily peated, quite young single malt whiskey. Uh, the 17 year old, a little bit more mature, and the 21 year old, very mature, very complex. And there had been a long time the 24, 25 year old uh, Authenticus, but uh, I think it's gone from the market already. These small miniatures are available in two miniature sets, uh, but they are intermixed, so you have to look what's in those miniature assortments. Uh, on top of this normal range, there are a lot of finished whiskies. Here, this one is a 15 year old Pedro Jimenez finish. Um, and there are always new finishing whiskies uh, from Ben Uriach. There are some from uh, Madeira, Tawny Port, Dark Rum, Sotern. Moscatel, you name it. And whenever you say, oh, I'm sorry, uh, this one is gone, there will be a next one, definitely. And I think the 15 year old will be replaced soon with 18 year olds uh, because the whiskies are that old now. Um, but I'm afraid prices will rise. Um, then we have the single cask bottlings, on the other hand. Uh, uh, 1990 with a tawny port finish, uh, 93 with an American virgin American oak finish, because they <laughs> might have had a lot of uh, second and third fill American oak casks in the warehouses. And in 1999, uh, Pedro Jimenez sherry, very dark, very good. And one of these 1976. This whiskey is a single cask from 76. It's expensive. It's really, really expensive. Um, well, I have a lot of work to do tasting through all these single malt whiskies, but uh, this will take uh, quite a time. So please be patient and follow my channel. There will be some Ben Riach coming up. Um, but I have uh, to taste a few innovations first, um, so it will take quite a time uh, to taste through all these whiskies. And if I present all these whiskies in a row, it would be boring for those who would not like to hear something about Ben Riach. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and feel free to share this video with your friends and ask questions in our forum and look up those bottles in our whiskey database on whiskey.com.